Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to another Sunday morning service at Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches. Welcome to our YouTube uh, page. Welcome to our uh, Facebook and our uh, conference call. We thank you for another Sunday morning. We give our, God the honor and the glory for taking us through another week. We thank you, God, for what he's doing in our life, for the movement in this last day. We thank you just for all the ministries, God, that's yet standing for holiness and standing for righteousness in these last days, God. And, uh, even though we just came, like I said, we, I keep saying, we came out of epidemic, you know, and like I said, this is just the beginning of them. We still had to stand strong no matter what. We had COVID. We don't know what's coming next, but we know something is coming next because the Bible says it's coming. But he said we will be protected and we'll be, be, we'll be covered regardless of what it is. We plead the blood of Jesus and cover our families and cover our kids in the blood of Jesus. We will, we will be protected. So we thank God for what he's doing. We thank you for the Moses that he's doing in this in this country. We thank God. Just, it, just, just so much stuff going on, but we're yet blessed. We're yet blessed. If we just take time to just look around and just, just look at things. We are blessed. The ones that are listening on our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and on our uh, conference call, man, if you're hearing, hearing this message every Sunday, you are blessed. <clears throat> you are blessed regardless of what your situation is. Because you may be in a nursing home, you may be in the hospital, but you can hear the word of God. You are blessed. Because through uh, uh, it's through the word of God that we are healed in our bodies, healed in our souls, and healed in our minds. So we thank God for the men and women of God that are yet bringing forth the word over the airways because it, it, when the COVID-19 COVID came, <clears throat> everything got shut down, it brought a lot of people to a whole different level because a lot of people wasn't on uh, on the airways. But we, we thank God, but his word that like we just taught last Sunday, you know, the Bible said it be preached all over, preached in the four corners of the earth. And when everything shut down, everybody started learning how to do Facebook, YouTube, you know, and a conference call. And so that means it can go all over the world, Japan, Russia, anywhere now. Anywhere Facebook and YouTube is at, it can go all over the world. And the Bible said that that day will come. His word will be preached in the four corners of the earth, and it's being done now. So we thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for the molding and the shaping God. And we just, we just, just bless the Lord, no. Just bless the Lord for everything he's doing. We are truly, truly blessed. I mean, there's so much killing, so much dying that's going on. But if you're hearing this here and you're sitting in the audience, we are blessed. Don't count it lightly that we will be here next week. We will be here next day. Every day is a blessing. Every day we can wake up in our right minds. You know, and being able to walk, you know, and have, have just, just our right mind, we are blessed. We are truly blessed for what he's doing in this day and this time. We thank God for the man and the woman of God that he put over us. As the man of God begin to come forth and bring the word, prepare your hearts and souls, get ready to, uh, to receive the word of God. So before he comes, we're going to ask everyone to stand so we can have prayer. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, God. As your word begin to come forth, God, open up our wills, my knowledge, and understanding, God. Let our ears be open to your word, God. This word may be in our souls and be in our hearts, God, that we may take the same word and go back and bless someone else, God. It may be a encouragement to someone else that may can't come to the church, may not have a cell phone, someone on our job, someone just out in the street, God. This word may be in our soul, God. We may bless your people, God, that you may get all the honor and we give you all the glory for what you're doing. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to be a blessing, God. We thank you for the man of God about to bring forth the word of God. Lord, continue to use him for your glory, God, that your people may be blessed in the name of Jesus, God, and they may give you the honor and give you the glory for everything that you're doing. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Prepare your hearts and souls for the man of God. Pastor B. Steelville. And don't forget, bring your pen and paper. Get ready. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Let us all stand if we're able to give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for another blessed day. Thank you for everything that you have done in your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. Thank you for everything that you are doing in your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. And Lord God, thank you for everything that you will do in your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. We thank you, Lord God, for you being the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the one and only. No beginning, no ending. But we just want to say thank you Thank you. Thank you. 
for including us in this particular day. We say thank you, because you didn't have to do it. But you did. You touched us and woke us up this morning. And we were obedient to your word. Your word tells us, do not forsake ourselves from the monks, the assembly of the congregation. So we're here, Lord God, being obedient to your word. Lord God, your word will not come back void. And you plan before the foundations of the world for us to be here in the sanctuary, on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, even on our conference line. You already foreknew that. And we all are being obedient to your word that will not come back void. Thank you, Lord God, for our obedience to you and only you. We give you, Lord God, all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We just want to say thank you. In your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and everybody who loves the Lord God, let them say amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Glory be to God. Ain't God good? You may be seated. Family, last Sunday, glory be to God, Minister Henry and Minister Sherry brought a word that we give God thanks for that word being brought last Sunday. That word is from the book of Matthew, glory be to God, chapter 24. That word, the title of their message said it all. The signs are appearing. Are you ready? Amen. The signs are appearing. Are you ready? Glory be to God. And you know, the book of Matthew chapter 24 that they came from, it's a verse that says it all that we can all relate to. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. That verse tells us, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But then God follows up and says, but be not troubled. Glory be to God. Be not troubled. For the end is not yet. Glory be to God. Rumors of wars, wars, but be not troubled. The end is not yet. Now, by that verse being there, Matthew 24 and 6, that lets us know God is still a second chance God. He's a second chance God. He's still giving us a chance because he's telling us about wars and rumors, but he assures us, be not troubled. Don't worry. Amen. 
The end is not yet. Why? Because he's given us another chance. He's still giving us a chance. A chance to do what? Just what the title of my message is. A chance to do what? Hold, let me get my message title right. Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. God has given us another chance. You know he a second chance God. But his second chance are many. Amen? Amen. Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. And you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed if you just hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm. Stand firm on what? Don't waver on what? Hold your ground on what? The word of God. Family, the message they brought last week is a wake-up call. The end days are coming. But the Lord God put Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 in there for a reason. Do not be troubled. The end is not yet. Meaning, you have another chance to hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. Because that's the only thing that ain't going to change. God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit is immutable. Those three have immutability. We don't. We'll switch out and change in a minute. But immutable means... Never changing. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same to tomorrow, forevermore. Never changing. We can't say that. Because we change. Amen? We change our mind in a minute. Amen? But thank God, he's immutable. He said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? Amen. Well, that's in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Meaning, he ain't going to change. He loves us, and we're going to get into that. But we're going to talk about, we're going to continue to talk about what Minister Henry and Minister Sherry brought last week. The signs are appearing. Are you ready? The sign, what are the signs? Matthew 24 and 6 is, tells us clear. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but be not troubled. The end is not yet. Do you know that is good news for us? The end is not yet. What does that mean? We still got a chance to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold your ground. Stand firm on the word of God. Let's go to our scripture reading and get into this message. 
scripture reading is coming from second, the book of Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 12. Scripture reading. Second Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 12. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12, our scripture reading. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. Hallelujah. And ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus the Christ. Glory be to God through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you for the reading of your word. We ask that you, Lord God, continue to bless us through your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody who loves the Lord God, let them say amen. Amen. That the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. Do you know it's a lot in being glorified with Jesus? The last days are coming, but the Bible clear it, it is not yet. So it's on us. What you want to do? To get it right. Amen. Everybody wants judgment day. Stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is glorified. Stand before him at the gates and he say, well done, my faithful servant. Come on in. We got your heavenly robe right here. And we got your heavenly mansion over there. Come on in. Did you know God has given us another chance to get it right in Jesus and his son's precious name? Amen. Glory be to God. Let's get, let's start, let's get into our message. <clears throat> Remember our title, because I'm always referencing this title, doing this message. The title, Hold Your Ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. Amen. You know, we here at Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches, we believe in the power of three. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what's in our title? It's three things we must do. Hold our ground, don't waver, and stand firm on the Word of God. If we do them three things on the Word of God, guess what's going to happen on Judgment Day? Well done, my faithful servant. Come on in. Ain't that what we want? Well, let me ask, hold on. Let me ask this question. Just to clear all this up. Who don't want the Lord God, Jesus the Christ, to say, well done, my faithful servant. Come on in. Who don't want that? Raise your hand. I don't see nobody's hands raised in the sanctuary. And we got our YouTube watchers and our Facebook watchers and our conference line listeners. I don't think they got their hand up on that question neither. In Jesus' name, amen. Our message is coming from 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 13. We're going to go all the way down to verse 17. And this message, remember our title. Hold your ground, don't waver, stand firm on the word of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting at verse 13. I'm reading out of the King James Version. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hallelujah. And hold the traditions which ye have been taught. Let me read that again. Verse 13. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistles. Glory be to God. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish in every good word and work. Thank you, Lord God. Let's go back to the top. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Glory be to God. Verse 13. We're going to break this down. I won't be before you long, but we're going to break these verses from 13 to 17 down. Verse 13, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brothers beloved of the Lord. Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Now what that verse is telling us, from the very beginning, God has chosen us to be saved, glory be to God, through separation. That's that sanctification. God has chosen us to be saved through sanctification. Separation, amen, by the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And what are some of the spirit of truth job assignments? The spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, some of his job assignments is to lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen? That's some of his assignments. Amen? He has many. But his assignments is always the action part of the word. Because we know God the Father is the thinker. God the Son is the speaker. God the Holy Spirit is the actor. He's the action. So he's putting in the action. Amen? For us. Separation. Now when you separate something. Amen. <clears throat> if I want to separate. If I got a bowl of mixed fruit. 
I got in this bowl, I got apples, oranges, and peaches. But I want to separate them. To separate the apples from the oranges and the peaches, don't I have to pick them out and put them to the side? Is that not action? It takes action to separate. This is for us. God has got the Holy Spirit in action on our behalf. Sanctification. Ain't that what the word said? Sanctification. Let me read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, one more time. Because we're talking about sanctification, which is separation. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification. Well, who doing the se who, sanctification, separation? Who doing the separating? Don't we have to separate the oranges from the apples and the peaches? Well, who doing the, sanctu the sanctification for us? It's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. Ain't that what it said? It said all this the Spirit of truth is doing, which is the Holy Spirit. I need us to get that part first before we go further. The Holy because we learn a lot about God the Father and God the Son, but it's not a lot taught on the Holy Spirit. Well, we here at Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches, we're going to make sure you get that part too. The Holy Spirit, God has in his word said, from the, God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Well, salvation is Savior. Well, who is our Savior? His Son for sanctification. Sanctification is separation by who? It's telling you plain as day from the spirit of truth. And all we got to do, because it got the word belief in there, is believe. Believe what? Believe God the Son, our Lord and Savior, has came down from glory to die for our sins past, present, and future sins so that we might have eternal life with him and his father and the Holy Spirit in heaven. So we got our Lord God sending salvation. Amen. God has from the beginning chosen you, us. God has chosen us. Hold on. From the beginning. Amen. You know what that means? He chose us before we were even here. Because we're the only ones got a beginning. Amen. He don't got no beginning. But he chose us from the beginning. Before we were here, he chose us. We didn't choose God first. God chose us first. Amen. Now, God did say, choose this day who you're going to serve. Now it's time for us to choose. But he didn't already chose. From the beginning, he chose us. That's what he's saying. God has, from the beginning, chosen you. Put you in this. This is you. God has chosen you to salvation. His son, the Savior. Salvation. Savior. His son. Through sanctification. Through separation. Through separation. Well, who's doing the separation? Of the spirit and belief of the truth. Well, who is the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit. Well, who do you have to believe in? The Son. You know, when you believe in God the Son 
and accept Jesus the Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what you just did? You just activated the Holy Spirit to work on your behalf. And that's all God is telling us. Amen? He got all this lined up for us. But he starts out in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. Amen? You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but be not troubled. The yet, the, the end is not yet. All because we got a second chance. He's a God of second chances. He's giving us all these chances to do what? What our title say. Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. You got to do all this on the word of God. Amen. That's why in the word of God it says study to show yourself approved unto God. Amen. It didn't say study to show yourself approved under man. Because if you do that, guess what? Now you trying to impress man. Amen. Now you trying to be intelligent over somebody. God didn't give his word to be intelligent. God gave his word for you to share and spread the good news of the gospel. That's why he gave you the word. Not to be intelligent with it. Just share it. Amen. Hold on. It ain't but one intelligence. And that came from the Father. How you gonna take his job? That's his job. Amen? What we do is we try and God is with us emulating him, his son. Amen? You know how they say, well, what would Jesus do in this situation? Well, we're going to emulate Jesus now. You know what Jesus would do? What he always do. Share and spread the good news of the gospel. The word of God. Amen. Verse 14. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. Amen. It ain't no getting around that. I don't care where you at. You don't even have to be a believer. But in your day's journey, guess what's going to happen? You're going to hear something about the word of God. You're going to see a billboard. You're going to see something. You're going to hear something about the word of God. Even if you're around people that don't talk, don't say nothing about the word of God. They just talking worldly. And let somebody sneeze. First, God bless you. You always hear something about the word of God. You can't get away from it. And guess what? God already know that. God already know that. No, you can't say that you didn't hear my word. You hear my word daily during the course of a day. And did you know you can even be just say you are you, uh, got sick and went to the hospital. And you're in your hospital bed, in your room, by yourself. Did you know you hear the word of God then? You know how? Because most people are going to pray to God. They're going to pray for help from the Lord. Did you know by you just praying, you ain't got to pray out loud. You can pray in thought. But listen, did you know when you pray in thought, guess what's happening? You hearing everything you thinking. So you're going to always hear the word of God. Regardless if you want to or not. Let's move on. Whereunto, verse 14, whereunto he called you by our gospel. That's his word. To the obtaining of the glory of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, God has chosen you to obtain or take part of the glory of his son, Jesus the Christ. He called you to, up, that was the word said, the word said obtain. He called you to obtain 
or take part in what? The glory of his only begotten son. He called you to be a part of it. To be a part of what? God's glory. We were chosen from the beginning to be a part of God's glory. You, you got to put yourself, listen, this whole message is about you. So make sure you put you in it. Amen. Put you in it. God's, from the very beginning, God chose you to obtain or take part of the of his son's glory. You know his son is glorified in heaven and God chose you to obtain that glory. Listen, you got to understand what the word is telling you. Amen. I'm going to have to read that one more time. Amen. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory. That's what you obtaining. The glory of who? The obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is our Lord Jesus Christ that has the glory. Amen. He has the glory. And guess what? We can obtain that through him. We can't go around him and obtain it. We can't go over him and, and obtain it. We can't go under him and obtain it. We got to go through him to obtain it. So the only way you're going to go through to obtain is to accept Jesus the Christ as your Lord and Savior. Salvation. You got to accept it first. But once you accept it, never forget this. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you done activated the Holy Spirit to come on in. Now the Holy Spirit is in you. You know God ain't un 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 unseemly. He ain't going to act unseemly. He going to do everything decent and in order. Guess what? He ain't going to force nothing on you. You know why he ain't going to force nothing on you? Because he blessed us with something that he didn't bless the angels. He blessed us with free will. That means we make our own mind up. We make our own choice. Even when we make bad choices, God already know that. That we're going to make some bad decisions in life. And guess what? Ain't nobody exempt from that one. We all done made bad decisions. And we're probably going to make some more. But guess what? That's what comes with free will, even with our bad decision making. Forgiveness. See, that's the blessing when God blessed us with free will. It came, free will comes with forgiveness. You can be forgiven if you ask. The Bible clear. You have not because you ask not. You got to ask for forgiveness. Amen. In, first, in the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9, it tells us if. Why would a verse start out with if? You know why? Because if, that means you have a choice. That means you ain't forced. It starts out with if. You confess your sins. God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And all you got to do is ask. Confess with your mouth. Ask for forgiveness. Lord God, forgive me. I know I've fallen short. I'm a sinner. And I ask for forgiveness. I repent through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, you ask for forgiveness in Jesus the Christ's name. And you repent? You didn't accept it, my son. So you covered by the blood. Now I can see you. And cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, when you covered by the blood and God look at you through the blood of his son, don't you know you pure as snow? You're pure as snow because he's looking at you because you're covered by the blood. It's so much tied to accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen? 
And as soon as you accept him, you done activated the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want. We want the action part. Because the action part is the sanctification part. He going to separate it. All we got to do is accept. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. <clears throat> the word of God is the Bible. The whole Bible is the word of God. Some of the books were epistles. Glory be to God. Amen. There are 21 epistles in the Bible. Epistles are letters written to the church. Epistles. The 21 of them. And thank God for Paul. Who used to be Saul. Turn, got a name changed to Paul. He wrote two-thirds of the epistles. Now, there ain't but 21 of them. He wrote two-thirds of them. Amen? Well, two-thirds of 21 is 14. But he wrote 13 books. He wrote from the book of Romans. Excuse me. He wrote 13 epistles. He wrote 13 epistles that we know of. From, the, from Romans to Philemon. He wrote them 13. Then after Philemon is the book of Hebrew. The book of Hebrew is an unknown writer. But it's a lot of people think Paul wrote Hebrews. They just don't know. And the only reason they think Paul wrote it because the book of Hebrew is Paul's style. But they're not sure if he wrote. That's why we can't say he wrote the book of Hebrews. But we know they epistle. Amen. But we know he wrote from Romans to Philemon. 13 epistles. And did not the Bible talk about epistles in this, in this verse? Verse 15, 2 Thessalonians, glory be to God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistles. So I had to clear up epistles for you. So we're going to all be on one accord here at Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches. What the word epistle mean? It means letters written to the church. Glory be to God. And he wrote, Paul wrote two-thirds of the epistles. And there's ain't but 21 epistles now. Amen. I done heard coming up, people say, Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Hold on. Isn't it not 27 books in the New Testament? And if you're going to write two-thirds of the New Testament, that means you had to write 18 books. But Paul only wrote two-thirds of the epistles because there's only 21 epistles. I want to clear that up. Amen. Amen. It's good to know than not know. Amen. And did you know, this is what I love about the word of God. God don't want you to be selfish with it. When God gave you a word, he, he given it to you for one reason, for you to share and spread the good news of his gospel. So that's why I'm sharing. And I'm spreading the good news of the gospel. Amen. In his precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. You know, family, I have read a lot of books in my days. But my choice of reading was in the Bible. But I read a lot of books. Amen. But when I got into the Word of God, 
Do you know this is the best book I ever read? I have not read a book nowhere close to the Bible. I read, I read the whole Bible three times. Three times I done read the Bible from front to back. One, I read it because I just wanted to read it. Amen. And then two times I read it to my mom who passed away and gone to glory. Bessie Ree Robinson. I read it to her twice before she went to glory. My point. How you going to know anything about epistles and you don't read the word? How you going to know anything about the word of God and you don't read the word? How you going to know that the Bible is telling you that Jesus said, no one can get to the Father but through me. So in order, in order to get to the Father, you got to accept Jesus. How are you going to know you need to accept Jesus to get to heaven if you don't read the word? You got to read the word. Amen? The Bible do say, study to show yourself approved unto God. Study what? Study his word. You have to read it. Did not the Bible say, study to show yourself approved unto God, that means you got to read it. You can't just sit there and listen to the messenger. Hold on now. I've always told you, don't follow the messenger. Follow the message. It's all about, and what is the message? The word. So it's all about the word. It, 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 this whole this whole message, hold your ground, don't waver, stand firm on the word of who? God. Is not the word, is not the name word in our message. Do you know it's all about stand firm on the word of God? This word, the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Do you know if we didn't have basic instructions before leaving earth, in other words, the Bible, we'd be lost and couldn't get it done. When I said couldn't get it done, I mean he couldn't get it right. You know, you need this word to get it right. Don't think you can just get it right on your own. You need the word to get it right. I, I, let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. My wife bought some kind of box for to put cushions and stuff in. You know, outdoor cushion, outdoor box for outdoor stuff. Put it like that. In the box, I, I kept saying I'm going to put it together. But I kept giving myself a day, Saturday. I'm going to do it on Saturday. Saturday came, it rained. Okay. Another Saturday came. It rained again. Days went on. I had to work. I had to go to work on a Saturday. So yesterday, I said, you know what? I'm going to fix the box. I'm going to put the box together. So when my wife get home, it'll be put together. Took it out the box. Put everything together but this one piece. The most important piece. The top piece. The covering. I must have struggled back there for about an hour trying to get this. Now, I put the box together, everything together, within 20 minutes. But I struggled with the top over an hour. 
and I couldn't get it to go. So now the, the instruction, because on the front it said on the box, no tools required. So that let you know it's simple. But the top wouldn't go on. Now I'm thinking all kind of stuff. You know how your mind get to wandering? This is still on the word of God now. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Ain't that where we left off at? So I'm back there struggling with just one piece that I need to get on and it's done. I can't get it on. Now my mind is wondering, I'm assuming, and you know you ain't supposed to assume because assumptions are not facts. But I'm assuming what my wife going to say when I tell her I can't get the top on. Now, I'm assuming what she going to say. Well, if you would have put it together when you first got it, everything probably would have fit right. You know, you know, because that woman, she don't, you know, she going to say what she going to say. <laughs> Amen. So I'm already assuming what she going to say. Not knowing, but I'm thinking, oh, no, she's going to, if I did it when it first got it, then everything would work right now. You didn't let the rain and, and, and Eon and, and the storm and everything rain on it. Oh, oh, man, I was all messed up. So I said, well, I'm going to have to tell her when she get here. I, I got it put together, but for one piece. So I picked up the box and I folded it up and I throwed it in the garbage. I throwed everything else in the garbage on top of the box. Then I went in the house. Look at the Holy Spirit. I went in the house. I'm still thinking about what my wife's going to say when she get home. And I tell her. So the Holy Spirit said, get what the Holy Spirit told me. Basic instructions. I said, all I heard was basic instructions before leaving earth. And the first thing I thought about was the instructions that came with the thing. I shot back outside, went to the garbage, and got the instructions. Because it was so easy to put together, I never looked at the instructions. That's how easy it was. So I looked at the instructions, and I got to the top part. You won't believe how simple it was. You had to put it on a certain way. You had to lay it flat and push it in. I'm laying it like this, trying to jam it in. It wouldn't go in. It, I mean, I went and got a screwdriver and everything. It said no tools needed. I went and got a screwdriver. I'm trying to bend the stuff to get the stuff to go in. But I said, no, I can't break it, because that's going to break it. I got the instructions. The instructions said, you lay it flat and just push it in. So I laid the instructor, I got the top, laid it flat, one end just went in so easy, boom, oh, I got, it's six of them now, I got all six in, and then the instructor said, then go up and down. So I went up and down and everything locked in place. Then I closed it and it lined up just right. Thank you, Lord God. For what? Thank you for basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what we need. I went through all that to let you know this is what you need. But guess what? If you don't read it, you won't know it. I just proved that to myself. I didn't read the instructions. Just like people thinking they can get it right. You can't get it right. You can't get it right. You need basic instructions before leaving earth to get it right. You need your instruction manual. Just like I needed to put a simple box together and couldn't do it until I read what? The basic instructions. That's all I'm saying, family. We need to read our basic instructions before leaving Earth. Because you can't get it right on your own. You can't. Glory be to God. Verse 16. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us 
and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Hold on. Did the word just say it? Who our Lord Jesus the Christ and his Father has given us, did it not say consolation? Consolation. Hold on. Consolation in this verse is comfort. Has not our Lord Jesus the Christ and God the Father through the Holy Spirit gave us comfort? Well, where do we get the comfort from? He make it simple. He gave us comfort through the nine fruits of the Spirit. Did you know it's comfort in the nine fruits of the Spirit? It's love. Is it not comfort in love? Joy. It's comfort in joy. Peace. It's comfort in peace. Patience. It's comfort in patience. Goodness. Is it not comfort in goodness? Gentleness. Is it not comfort in gentleness? Kindness. Is it not comfort in kindness? Faithfulness. Is it not comfort in faithfulness? And self-control. We know it's comfort when it's self-control. Because when you're out of control, guess what? Ain't no comfort in out of control. So, comfort. That's what the word said. That's what it said. It's talking about comfort when it says consolation. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 16. And matter of fact, not just any kind of consolation, everlasting. You know what everlasting consolation is? Everlasting comfort. That's what we want. We want everlasting comfort. Where there ain't but one place to get it and there ain't but two places to go. Heaven or hell? Well, the constellation comfort is in heaven. Amen. Ain't no third place to go. One or two. Well, I take that back. I take that back. It is a third place to go. Did you know it's heaven, hell, but did you know God is going to take hell and throw it into the lake of fire. For it's, it's bad enough you got the first death, but now he's going to throw that into the lake of fire. Now you got a second death. And the lake of fire, they say it's worse than hell. And we already know hell is bad. Amen. But thank God for his word, consolation. Not any kind of consolation, everlasting. Everlasting consolation, everlasting comfort. Amen? And it's comfort in the nine fruits of the Spirit. And where the nine fruits of the Spirit come from? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The Bible already told us we can obtain the glory of his Son. And where's his son? In heaven. In comfort. Constellation. Comfort. And good hope through grace. You know what the good hope through grace means? There is hope through grace. Well, who is grace? Jesus the Christ is grace. Did you know that? Grace, don't we want grace and mercy? We always hear about grace and mercy. Grace is God giving us what we did not deserve. Mercy is God withholding what we do deserve. Why would God withhold what we do deserve? Because he gave us grace. He gave us what we did not deserve. What didn't we deserve? We didn't deserve his only begotten son coming down here dying for our sins. We didn't deserve it. But he gave it to us. You know why? Because Jesus the Christ, one of his names is grace. He is grace. God gave us what we didn't deserve. 
grace. And good hope through grace. Where our hope lie? In God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's where our hope lie. Amen? We can't base our hope on man, meaning male and female. One thing for sure and two things for certain. Man, male and female, they can't do nothing but let you down. Guess what? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will never let you down. They would never leave you nor forsake. You know, forsake. Forsake is to let you down if they forsake you. If somebody forsakes you, they let you down. But God's word says that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Book of Deuteronomy, tell us Deuteronomy 31 and 8. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 17, our last verse. This wouldn't be a long, but it'd be a good message. Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. That's all this message is about. Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. Verse 17. Comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. <clears throat> Comfort your heart. Mm. How can you comfort your heart? By having the nine fruits of the Spirit. That's comfort. The nine fruits of the Spirit. God the Father, guess what he did? To comfort you. God the Father signed. You know how you do your signature? He signed. Amen. God the Father signed in eternity on our behalf. In other words, you got to have the right ID to claim the promissory note that God promised you by signing in eternity. Uh-oh. Now you got to have the right ID. God signed in eternity a promissory note on our behalf. Well, how are you going to cash in the promissory note? You got to have the right ID. Hold on. A promissory note. For example, you go to work all week. And... You finish, and they write you a check. That's a promissory note. Now, the check say $5,000. You got it in your hand. You got this promissory note of $5,000 in your hand. But guess what? You got to take it to the bank and cash it or wherever. They got to cash my check. What they going to ask you for? Ain't they going to ask you for ID? Do you not need the proper ID to cast the, the promissory note? You need the right ID. Well, look at God. Look what God did. God the Father signed a, in eternity on your behalf a promissory note. God signed a promissory note in eternity on your behalf. But to cash in on God's promissory note that he signed in eternity on your behalf, you got to have the right ID. And what is the right ID? His only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, is the ID. To cash that promissory note. God got, let me read that last verse again. Comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. He signed a promissory note. Now put you in it on your behalf. 
and to claim the promissory note, you got to have the right ID. And the right ID is accepting his son as your Lord and Savior. That's the right ID. Now you can cash in on a promissory note that God the Father signed. Listen, he signed this in eternity on your behalf. You got to put you in it. God already signed it on your behalf. And all you got to do, all you got to do to claim it is have the right ID. And the right ID is accepting his son. Did you know you can't get no better ID than that? That ID will never change. It'll never change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We can't say that for the ID we got. It's changing all the time. Amen. It changes all the time. It's always changing. If it ain't your address changing, it's the age on it. That change every year. Your age. If it ain't your age, when you take the pictures, how you look. Amen. Boy, he had a big old afro on that ID. Oh, yeah, I had a big old afro. Oh, one of them IDs. Now look at me. He ain't got no big afro now. Amen. But my point is, your ID change. But there's one ID that we need to claim the promissory note that don't ever change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that's, listen, in closing, God the Father signed in eternity on our behalf. In other words, you got to have the right ID to claim the promissory note that God the Father signed in eternity on your behalf. Then we all know who the right ID is. So we can't go wrong. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. your ground don't waver stand firm on the word of God in other words you know we believe in the power of three in other words don't give out on the word don't give up on the word and don't give in to the enemy don't give up don't give in don't give out Hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. Did you know when you stand on the word of God, you stand on the word of God, right? You got the right ID. The word of God. Well, who is the word of God? Isn't Jesus the Christ the word of God? Christ is the word. Amen. So stand firm on the word of God. Thank God for Jesus. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Family, this is a, a message that came out of last week's sermon by Minister Henry and Minister Sherry. Amen? And we just went through, they talked about Matthew chapter 24, but we went through Matthew 24 verse 6. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled. The end is not yet. Meaning, we still got a chance 
a chance to hold your ground. Don't waver. Stand firm on the word of God. You got the right ID to claim the promissory note that God signed in eternity on your behalf. In Jesus' name. Now, family, we're getting ready for our communion. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Glory be to God. <clears throat> on our TCOPB Facebook page, on our YouTube, Pastor B. Steelville YouTube channel, and on our Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches Conference line, we're getting ready to have communion in Jesus the Christ's name. So you can get your communion cup and your crackers, bread, cornbread, whatever, whatever you got to break. We're going to give you a little time to get your communion cup and your cracker, bread, together in Jesus the Christ's name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jesus the Christ. Give you a couple more minutes to get everything together. In Jesus the Christ's name. For communion. You know you can do communion every day. Amen. And we can really find that out. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it. Let us break. Glory be to God. And said, take, eat. Let us hear. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death still to come. Thank you, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus to Christ, for your will being done in all matters, Lord God. We ask through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus to Christ, Lord God, that you continue to keep us safe during these trying times, Lord God. Your, your son, he died for our sins. His blood washed away our sins. His stripes heals us so that we may be able to have eternal life over death. We gratefully thank you for that, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And everybody who loves the Lord God, let them say amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And let's give ourselves a God bless you hand clap. You may be seated. Before we close, somebody might not know God. The doors of the church are open, altar call. You know, God did say in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled. The end is not yet, meaning you still got a chance. <clears throat> and your chance is to cash in, claim that promissory note that God signed in eternity on your behalf by accepting his son, Jesus the Christ, as your Lord and Savior for the lost. The ones who don't know Jesus, know this, there ain't but one way to get to the Father. And that's through his son, 
Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. So if you don't know God, remember this about God. God is always open arms, ready to receive you back home. We all have fallen short. Amen. We all have wandered once upon a time in our life. We all needed to be saved. So we choose Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. So if you don't know God, now is your time, because God is like this. If you're on our TCOPB Facebook page, if you're on our Pastor B. Steelville YouTube channel, if you're on our Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches conference line, if you're in the sanctuary, all you got to do is just stand up. If you're in the sanctuary, come forward. If you're on the network watching or listening, you can just stand up. Hold your hands in the air and repeat after me. Lord God, I am a sinner. I have fallen short. I ask for forgiveness because your word tells us in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I confess, Lord God, and I ask for forgiveness. And I repent in your precious son, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen. And it's done. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Glory be to God. And you might know somebody who is lost and need prayer and a savior. They need the right ID to claim the promissory note that God signed in eternity on your behalf. Glory be to God. So if you know somebody, you can come forward for them. If you're on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or our conference line, you can stand in the gap for them as well. In Jesus the Christ's name. Let us pray for the ones who are standing in the gap for others. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, for the ones that are standing in the gap for others, Lord God. Lord God, touch the ones that are lost, that they're standing in the gap for. Touch them in a mighty way. Touch the ones that are lost, that our prayers are standing in the gap. Because my prayers... I stand in the gap for everyone, everywhere, all the time. So touch everyone, everywhere, all the time, Lord God. Touch them, lead them, and guide them into all truth and righteousness. And we call that as though it was done because it is done through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, Lord God. They have fallen short as well, Lord God. And they ask for forgiveness too, Lord God, because your word tells us in 1 John 1, 9. So we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for you touching the ones that we're standing in the gap for as well. Lead them to your marvelous light. Let your marvelous light continue to be a lamp to their feet. Let your word, Lord God, continue to be a light to their path, to continue to lead them and guide them into all truth and righteousness. Let no hurt, harm, or dangers come to them. Let no weapon formed against them, their soul, their body, or their spirit prosper. Continue, Lord God, to allow your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, stripes to continue to heal them all. I call that as though it was done because it is done through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And everybody who loves the Lord God, let them say amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of play. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now it's worship and giving. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, let's give God a hand clap of praise for worship and giving. You know, God gave his only begotten son. Did you know we can't outbeat God given? God gave us breath. You think about that breath you didn't get on your own. 
God is the giver of breath. If God say, I cut off breath, you can't live. So every breath, and we don't know how many breaths that we take a day. But it's a lot. And guess what? God gave breath. So we can't outbeat God giving. No matter what we give. But one thing for sure and two things for certain. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God don't want you to give grudgingly. He loves a cheerful giver. Because that's part of the nine fruits of the spirit. Don't joy bring cheer? Joy is the second fruit of the spirit. And joy brings cheer. God loves a cheerful giver in Jesus the Christ's name. And did you know on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, on our <coughs> conference line, you can give as well. You can mail it. You can mail your tithes, offerings, and donations to Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches, 3128 Avenue, excuse me, 2831 Avenue S, glory be to God, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404. That's 28. 31 Avenue S, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404, in the care of Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches. You can mail it. And did you know you can bring it right down here to the church? We'll be here until 12 noon. You can bring it to 2831 Avenue S, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404. Our deacons will be here to receive tithes, offerings, and donations. Glory be to God. And you can call. You can even do it over the phone with our treasurer, Sister Bridget. Our Sister Bridget number is 561-313-2373. That's 561 area code, 313-2373. And Sister Bridget can guide you over the phone how you can give tithes, offerings, and donations to Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches. And you can bring it right up here Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sister Pam and Sister Joni will be right here at the church and can receive your tithes, offerings, and donations at 2831 Avenue S, Riviera Beach, Florida, 33404 from 10 to 4, Monday through Friday. Glory be to God. Let us all stand. And pray over our tithes, offerings, and donations. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, for these tithes, offerings, and donations. Let it be edifying to your kingdom, Lord God. Let it do what you would have it to do, Lord God. We call that as though it was done, because it is done. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. We take nothing for granted. We just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God. Bless the ones that were able to give and gave, Lord God, through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And bless the ones that didn't have it to give, but Lord God, you know their hearts. Bless them as well through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And everybody who loves the Lord God, let them say amen. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. You may be seated. Now, we're getting ready to dismiss our benediction. But before we do our benediction and closing, there are a few things I'd like to share with everybody. The first thing I would like to share is Transformation Church at the Palm Beaches mission statement and vision statement. Our mission statement here at Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches is we plant, we water, and God brings the increase. And if everyone does a little, no one has to do a lot. Glory be to God. And Transformation Church of the Palm Beaches vision statement is winning and saving souls for the kingdom of heaven. Glory be to God. The first thing I want to share of three is 
When a man is out of place, his woman is displaced. His children is misplaced. And Jesus is replaced. All because a man is out of place. So men stay in place. Glory be to God. Second thing. It is good not to do wrong. And it is wrong not to do good. And if you do good by everybody, you won't wrong anybody. Glory be to God. And the third thing, when your heart is right toward God, God obligates himself to orchestrate your life, to bring you into the knowledge of the things you need to know and into the company of the people you need to know that is critical for your success and destiny in life. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us all stand for our benediction in closing. If you could repeat after me. For the grace of our Lord God, Jesus the Christ, and the love of our Lord God, God the Father, and the communion with the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Always and forever and for eternity. In Jesus the Christ's name. Through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, amen. I'm Pastor B. Steelville, and remember, be prayerful, be safe, and be still. God bless everyone.